Hello, this is Anthony Hobbs, and again, this is Willy Fogg, more specifically, the second episode of Willy Fogg. I think it's called Bon Voyage, yeah. Anyway, this character here, represented by a beaver, he represents Assistant Editor Ralph, who is a character in, well, I think almost every episode of the show, actually, yes. You see, he's the Assistant Editor, so the second in command, of a successful newspaper, the Morning Chronicle, yeah. And it was he that wrote the article in the, in the newspaper all about uh, modern vehicles and the length of time it takes to get to various places all over the world. That was one of the inspirations for Willie Fogg to do the bet in the first place, yeah. So yeah, he's quite important. And um, normally, of course, when you read a newspaper, it's one day late, something that happened yesterday. But in an evening newspaper, that's different. That's something that happened less than a day ago. So, of course, Mr. Weston, he tells Ralph, you know, come on, we've got to get this newspaper written quickly, you know, in less than an hour. Uh, the evening newspaper is written. Willie Fogg, the first person ever to go around the world in 80 days. Read all about it. Read all about it. Yeah. So, yes, that's the significance of him, that his article inspired the journey. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so the evening news goes out, and that's why lots of people know about it. That's why when Willie Fogg goes to the train station, there's loads of fans there because they know about it because they've read the evening news. Yeah. Yes, they sell pretty much every copy of the paper. Yeah. Well, before we get into that, this is a raccoon. He's uh, one of the four people that bet Willie Fogg that he, that he couldn't go around the world in 80 days. And he's the man that owns a train company. He's called Mr. Johnson. Now, I'd just like to apologise about my previous review. There is a blooper. Yes. I said the journey to go around the world in 80 days, it starts on the 2nd of October, 1872, that's correct, and then it finishes on the 22nd of December. No, it doesn't. He has to have returned to London by the 21st of December, not the 22nd, the 21st. So I'm sorry about that, that's a little blooper. But there's a blooper in episode two. Oh, well, we're only in episode two and already a blooper. The show itself makes a little mistake. The raccoon, uh, the member of the Reform Club, Mr. Sullivan calls him Weston. He is not Mr. Weston, he's Mr. Johnson. So, yeah, a little mistake there, yeah. But overall, you know, the show is 90% perfect, yeah. Anyway, he tells, you know, Mr. Sullivan that, um, yeah, he had to go to pack his things for the journey. And, um, but he's, he, 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 he's not late. But Mr. Fogg arrives one minute before it's time to leave at the train station. Oh, dear, that's cutting it a bit fine, to say the least, yeah. Anyway, next we have, yes, the two detectives, personified by dogs. We have Inspector Dix and Constable Bully. Anyway, Inspector Dix orders Bully to get by a newspaper from a paper boy. But the paper boy doesn't give him his change back. Well, that's a bit off. Anyway, if he hadn't done that, he would never have found out this vital piece of information. The newspaper shows Willie Fogg to go around the world in 80 days. And, of course, they recognise the face, because it's the same as the sketch artist picture. That's him. That's the man that robbed the bank, you know. So he goes to, you know, Commissioner Rowan, the head of Scotland Yard. We found him. We know who he is and how to find him, everything. He's got loads and loads of wealth. He doesn't have a regular job. Where is he getting all this wealth from? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. We've figured it out now. He's a thief. He steals money, yeah. And he's robbed the Bank of England. Yeah, Jenkins of the Teller identified him and all that. I don't think he has any intention of going around the world in 80 days at all. He just wants to leave the country. This is an excuse to leave the country. Yeah, yeah. And by the time we've figured it out, it'll be long gone and he'll be safe with all the money he's stolen. So there's no doubt in Inspector Dix's mind that, yes, Willie Fogg is definitely the man that robbed the bank and says to the, well, the commissioner, come on, give me the warrant for his arrest. And the commissioner says, no, I can't do that. If he was an average Joe, just a regular person, yes, I'd give you the warrant straight away. But he's incredibly rich. And in those days, they believed rich people were divine and chosen by God. You know, unless you've got absolute concrete evidence that he's guilty, I can't arrest him. If I arrest the wrong person, the reputation of Scotland Yard will be ruined. And Scotland Yard had like the best reputation in the world, the best police station ever. And then Inspector Dick says, so that's your answer, is it? We stand by and do nothing while the criminal leaves the country with what he's stolen. So Commissioner Rowan thinks, he's got to think fast, you know, because Willie Fogg is on the brink of leaving the country. And then the Commissioner says, I want you to trail Willie Fogg, follow him everywhere he goes. When you've got evidence of his guilt, then you can arrest him. OK, so a compromise, yeah. So that's their assignment, follow him wherever he goes, yeah. They'll get money from the police station, yeah, because obviously they need that for the, to finance the journey, yeah. And, uh, well, the, the, they, don't want to, they don't intend to follow him all around the world, 
No, just um, arrest them as quickly as possible. Find guilt. Find them do something illegal, yeah. And, uh, okay, next we have, um, okay, Willie Fogg. Naturally enough, he gets back to his house as, as quickly as he can. Well, actually, no, he doesn't. As cool as a cucumber, he has another game of snooker before he leaves. And the other members of the Reform Club are like, well, how can you be so nonchalant about this? You're going to be bankrupt if you lose the bet. But no, no, the stiff upper lip of the British, you know, and cool the cucumber plays a game, then makes his way back to the house, yeah. Oh, yeah, and, and as I said before, the second episode was the first episode I ever saw. And I thought, well, I haven't missed anything important. I know the journey hasn't actually started yet. I had missed something important. In the first episode, that's when he does the bet, or four people bet him, £5,000 each. If Willie Fogg wins, he gets £20,000. If he loses, they get 5000 apiece, yeah. Anyway, um... Uh, the, the the narrator of each episode, he does say Willie Fogg is determined to complete his journey. He He's wagered £20,000. What does wager mean? Little kids aren't going to know what wager means, you know. So, so yeah, yeah, you've got... To, you should say bet. He's betted 20000 but the, the narrator never does. He always says he's wagered it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, wager means bet, but I didn't know that until later. Anyway, Willie Fogg, a good character and everything, yes, but... um. When he gets back home, Passepartout, or he's not called Passepartout, he's called Rigodon, his new butler, he says, we have to go out, you know, we have to go out and go to, um, uh, we're going on a trip. And the thing is, Willie Fogg, he doesn't apologise to Rigodon. He says, I'm sorry for springing this on you, you know, um, and I know you specifically wanted to work somewhere that doesn't involve any travelling. No, he doesn't apologise for this sudden change of heart at all. But then that's what it was like in the 19th century. The upper class never apologised for doing something unpredictable or, or upsetting. They just said, I make the rules and you can like it or lump it. That, that was the attitude at the time. Anyway, Willie Fogg with his butler, there they get to the train station. Mr Sullivan has no doubt in his mind that Willie Fogg is going to lose. Yes, he says, you've got near one minute before departure time. That's a bit of a bad start, isn't it? Oh yes, and Mr Sullivan neglects to mention something. Before the train leaves, he gets in a coach, he talks to another wolf like him, about something that's top secret. It's an employee of his called Transfer, who is a master of disguise. And he says to him, I want you to stop Willie Fogg from winning the bet. Mr Fogg is the most boastful, most arrogant person ever, and I want him to be exposed for the fool that he is. Yeah. Now, I assumed um, if Transfer stops Willie Fogg from completing his journey around the world in 80 days, I mean, he only has to delay him one day, and that'll be enough to make him lose, yeah. I assumed he got a percentage of the wager, or half the wager. No. Mr Sullivan is will willing to give him all the wager if he succeeds, a total of £5,000. That's like the equivalent of like a million pounds, yeah. Oh, wow, that is very generous. Well, Mr Sullivan is incredibly rich, and he says the money isn't important to me. It's exposing Willie Fogg for being a stupid, loud mouth, boastful fool, yeah. OK, so it's a, an ego thing, basically, <laughs> yeah. Transfer agrees to do it and, yes, starts following Willie Fogg straight away. And then afterwards, um, yes, uh, Willie Fogg, he's pleased that all these fans are saying goodbye to him and everything. I said before he doesn't have any friends. Well, I think um, Lord Guinness likes him a little bit, yeah. Anyway, he gets on the train, or the hero's uh, farewell, they all wave. Good luck, Mr Fogg, I'm sure you'll succeed, yeah. Then they, and uh, Oh, yes, Constable Bully and... Um, <laughs> Inspector Dix, they have to chase the train and jump on it like that and uh, while it's still moving, you know. That wouldn't be physically possible nowadays because, of course, yes, the train at the automatic doors won't let you in or out until it's safe. Yes, so that, yeah, but it makes it exciting, a bit of action here. Yeah, it has action and excitement and all sorts, yeah. Anyway, they manage to get on the train just in the nick of time. They leap through the windows of the train while it's moving, yeah. Then they get to through Dover. Oh yes, and I suppose I have to mention Passepartout left the light on in his room. Yes, they had gas lamps there, not, not electric lights. He turned out all the other ones, but he forgot to turn the light out in his room. And Mr Fogg says, don't worry, why not? I'll simply deduct the cost from your wages. So for 80 days, he's not going to be paid a penny. Oh dear, well, well Rigodon's not very pleased about that, no. Anyway, they, they follow him uh, in the... In, they go They go to Dover, get on the boat, and then to Calais, France. Inspector Dix is not pleased about this. He want, wanted to, yeah, um, arrest him a lot sooner, yeah, but this is going to be a long journey. We're, 
out of the country and I've nothing to go on, yeah. Anyway, um, then afterwards, okay, back to Willie Fogg. Um, he, um, he and Rigodon are in France. They've got their passports and everything ready. And then they, they go on a journey. And Oh, yes, and a woman comes into their compartment where they're sitting first class, you know, very comfy seats and everything. And um, it's not a woman at all. No, it's transfer in disguise. But the thing is, she's a total stranger. You invite her into your compartment, you know, just like that. Well, very trusting in the 19th century, yes. And, um, and, but no, I guess it wasn't unusual back then. People were more trusting, yeah. And uh, she, uh, when the lights go out, she attempts to rob them, get the bag and open it, steal some money, yeah. Doesn't succeed. Tico, the little hamster, bites her finger and she runs away. And um, she's gone and uh, they think, what's going on? Uh, you know, it's very strange, you know. And um, they think, well, we're just going to have to get on with the journey, yeah. But uh, yes, people more trusting in those days than they are now. It shows how times have changed. I would not let a total stranger into your compartment. Not when you've got a bag full of about £20,000. No way, no. Anyway, but we've been given an inkling. Yes, it was a shock to find out that the woman was transferred in disguise all along. Yeah, so um, yes, that's our first taster of what transfer, how clever he is at changing his voice, yeah. Anyway, the narrator ends the episode by saying transfer is determined to stop him and the inspector has resolved that the man he believes to be a thief will be brought to justice. Yeah. So yes, the stakes are higher now, yes. Willie Fogg, instead, instead of a hero, the inspector sees him as a hunted bank robber. So yeah, yeah, the, yes, the plot thickens and we're only in episode two. Okay, so yes, it was a great first episode to see. I would have preferred it if I saw the first one first, but yes, um... Yes, the second episode got me hooked. I was interested straight away from this episode, yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay, well, there'll be more episodes soon, but until then, thank you for watching. I'm Anthony Hobbs, and I'm never bored.